Pity Beats here from Pop Turner is speaking to Hadass Yarana, but we were the lucky ones, which is streaming now on Hulu. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. You know, I want to know because audition processes are different depending on the project. I'm just curious about this one specifically because sometimes they tell you a lot. Sometimes they don't tell you anything at all. What was that like for this one specifically with Hulu and we were the lucky ones? Um, it was different. Usually you get a script um, also that you like have to read in like a day and, and then just like learn your lines in a day. And I'm like, whoa. Um, but for this, we only I only got... I got the scenes. I got three scenes, like a character description. And actually, I think I, I even got like a decent few days. Like they were like deadline by next week. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I was pretty busy at the time. So I ended up doing it uh, probably a day or two before the deadline. But um, so I sent it self-tape. I did send it a day before the deadline, which I was very proud of because I'm usually a very last minute person. And then um, it's funny. I remember showing it to my partner at the time and I, and I was like, look at this tape. I, I like it. And he was like, I think you could have done better. Like, and I was like, really? <laughs> um, eventually, yeah, it, but eventually it worked. So I'm glad. Um, and then I just met with uh, with. Tommy, the director, Erica Lipez, our uh, showrunner, Fiona, the casting director. And we just like the next, like the process after the first self-tape was just like mm -hmm. Zooms and and just reading with them and talking with them until like they chose me. Yeah. And then there's it's, it's interesting, too, because there's so many kind of steps because that's like the first step of like, you know, 48 of her steps until the show kind of comes out. It's a really it's really it's it's released now on Hulu. You just did a press drunk and everything. It's starting, I think, to sink in that people get to see it. But what was that like from you from a storytelling acting perspective journey wise? Did it feel like one big journey with multiple steps like we talked about? Or did it feel like two separate journeys before filming and after filming? You mean the casting yes. and then the production? Casting, but it's just like there's so much that happens before you even go to camera, if you think about it. There is. <laughs> there is. Um, I guess, I don't know. It was just, you know, you live your life. So it's it's a part of life. Um, and then um, I guess I, I really did enjoy the casting process, though. And mm. it's usually not the case, I think, because mm. it's a very, like, nerve-wracking situation yeah. um, but there was just something so sweet and genuine and easy like very natural um so it was just very refreshing to have that because yeah. I also I also remember at the time I had like this reading for this um, theater company uh in Israel where I live and and I remember like they brought me in for a reading of like three hours, like 8 a.m. on a Friday morning, which is like your Saturday, I guess, or yeah. our Friday. And I did this reading. And then at the end of the reading, nobody even said thank you. And then the day after I had a reading with Mr. Tommy Kale, who's like, yeah, you know, and and I had like a 20 minute Zoom session with them which was right on time and they were so kind. And then at the end of the Zoom, they were like, thank you so much for your time. And I was like, thank you, man. You have no idea. I just spent three hours yesterday morning and nobody even gives a shit about that. They didn't even say like, we'll let you know or like, we'll keep you posted. Yeah, and, just like, and by the way, I've, I've never heard from them. <laughs> like, come on, guys. No. Well, I think that, that's kind of one of the things about actors, right? It's like there's this misconception where like people think actors like know what's going on and they're like in the know. <laughs> who, who thinks actors know what's going on? Who, who thinks? I, I think, you know, you hear stories where people say like they bump into an actor on the street. Like, you know, you like they're going to have more seasons of this, right? You can tell me and they're like. Your oh, yeah, decision yeah, yeah. is like your, your, your opinions and your guess are as good as mine. You're right. Definitely. Unless you're like really already like in the top and you're also oh, yeah. producing and stuff like that. But if you're an actor, then <laughs> yeah, when like there's this show is really show that I did that had like five years between the second season and the third. And during those years, like people were like, oh, my God, it's amazing. Five when years? Five years. Yeah. Did because people know it was coming or was it just up in the air if you were going to get a season like a season three? 
I think they knew because people really loved it in Israel. Okay. They were like, we have to have another season. Yeah. But Five you know, years, like, like half a decade to wait for one season is, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot. And like money-wise, there's not a lot of budget for yeah, stuff. Yeah, totally. Well, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was a, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess there was an understanding as well. But yeah, five years for sure. Um, but getting back to this, you know, uh, we were we were the lucky ones. I mean, I I find you know anytime it's something like you know, I'm curious what the preparation was like. You know what I mean? I'm sure there were times where it was really not easy. I'm sure there was times where you know um, it was very emotional. But I'm just wondering for you specifically. That there was source material, like like a book. I'm just curious, was like what was that relationship like specifically? Were you kind of using the book at all for preparation? Maybe you kind of didn't look at it. Like I'm just curious about that. I think um, first of all, the book really gives you a lot yeah. for sure. Um, and then the adaptation to the scripts were also very like it was really interesting because in the book, I think. What was nice was that you had all these like thoughts and and inner dialogue of the people that were going through this stuff. And then in the script, you got a bit more of the character that I'm not sure, like like they kind of like gave more character to the characters. Yes. So my character, Mila, like I wouldn't, like the way I read it in the script, I was like, oh, this is not how I imagine, like how I thought she would be in when I read the book. But, you know, Georgia Hunter, the writer of the book, the author of the book was yep. also part of the writers in, in the writer's room. Yeah, absolutely. So they made these decisions and like within like really a scene of, I don't know, a dialogue of like three, I don't know, three sentences, you already got like the gist of the character that was like, she got this like more of like a bitter, annoyed side to her. She's more serious. She's yeah. a bit more uptight, which you didn't feel in the book, which was very cool. But then when we were filming, I really enjoyed going back to the book whenever there were scenes because all of a sudden I read like Georgia, the way she wrote her thoughts. And it just gave me more, more to like just enriches like your the way you experience it. So that was really, really helpful and and really beautiful. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. There's a mind. It's all storytelling, whether it's a film, whether it's a series, but like a limited series, like this one. Does your kind of mindset or preparation change? Like maybe it's a little bit different because there's like episodes rather than just kind of a whole, you know, one hour thing. But like, you mean instead of a film? Yeah, exactly. But it's all it's it's the, it's all storytelling, right? At the end of the day. It's all storytelling, but you do need to remember because you don't necessarily film, you know, uh, chronologically. Yeah. And then you always need to remember what happened before, what happened next. Because yesterday you did episode three and yep. tomorrow you're doing episode seven. We actually had like the privilege of mostly doing it chronologically. Okay. So, um, so that was easy. And also, I think when you have good directors, they know to remind you. Like, because I have these little notes that I always write, like, what happened? What does she know? Because I need to remember that actually she doesn't know yet that this and that happened. So I always write it to myself just so I remember it, that I know that this is what the character knows right now, even if you don't play it, just to have it. But then when you have a good director that also says to you, you remember, you just came from that, da, 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 this just happened. And they're like, Oh, that's amazing. I forgot. Like, yeah. so it's really helpful to have a director that also like keeps you on track. What was it like kind of working with everyone specifically on this? There's situations maybe where you worked on an ensemble cast where, you know, you come in maybe for a couple of days and maybe you work with a couple of people, but for this one, you really got to work with a lot of people, right? So it really is like an ensemble cast experience. What was that like for you specifically? Um, it was it was really beautiful because we had really, really really great cool people um we were lucky because the first month we were all together um we had like two or three weeks of preparation so we had just three weeks of being there like doing like fittings and uh rehearsals and then we just like spent time together we were all staying in the same place we just had dinners and game nights and we played tennis we played code names in the english bar which was our like bar um of the hotel where we mm -hmm. just used to be there and just play um and we just really had time to 
it's funny because I want to say we had a lot of time to be together and get to know each other. But basically from the first dinner, we were just like, I think we have a photo like on the floor of the restaurant in the first dinner, like just when we met. We were very, um, it was really great to have all these people. Then after the first month when we all played a family together, kind of what happens in the series is that the family splits. Yes. And so in a way, we also split. So then there was a month of mostly Eva and uh, Joey and Amit like uh, playing together and mostly they were there. And then I joined a month later and then it was mostly me and Moran and Alex and Sam. And, and so we did, but we did mostly have our time together, but just not necessarily on set. Yes. Um, but we were there together the whole time. And it was whenever someone went away because they had like two weeks off, it was really sad. <laughs> no, for sure. And yeah, you mentioned code names. Have you ever done like a co- I used to do code name tournaments with my friends. They get pretty, pretty competitive. So, oh my God. <laughs> I love code names. It's yeah. really one of my favorite it's games. It's one of my favorite games too, but we have like tournaments. So you partner so, up with someone and like, it's like a, like there's a bracket and everything. It's it pretty crazy. <laughs> I want to go to your code name tournament. <laughs> it gets pretty wild. Really? Um, I do. You also have to have, you have to, you have to have an understanding of who your partner is too. For oh like- my God. That's so true. <laughs> you learn. I have the craziest thing is Moran. Also, she plays Herda in the show. Then we were we were understanding each other in ways when like we it was me, her, and Henry, mm-hmm. and Moran and I just knew. And Henry was like, "What the? How the hell did you understand that from that?" They were like, "This doesn't make sense." I know. And then we realized that we just have a very good. You probably win. You probably win the code names tournament. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and last question before we wrap up. I mean, the series is, is streaming now on Hulu. It's, it's available now, all the episodes. When they get a chance to watch, we were the lucky ones on Hulu, Yadas. What are you hoping they'll get out of it, specifically, takeaway-wise? Wow. Um, so much. Yeah. Um, I just hope... First of all, I hope people will, will feel something. Because I yeah. think that's just... That's the most meaningful thing, you know? Yeah. When to watch something and to have it like do something to you, touch you in some way, whatever way it is. Like you don't know every person is different. Um, So I would just be really curious to know what people feel when they watch it. I think it's really a show. It's about a very sad, dark time uh, in history. And it shows you a lot about the ugly side of human beings and all this hate. But at the same time, it really talks about, love yes so i just hope that people will feel that um humans are humans we're all like just trying to figure out in the world Mm -hmm. not hurt each other and um and yeah that they feel something Mm -hmm. (laughs) i guess absolutely no for sure um Mm -hmm. and yeah that's streaming now all the episodes on hulu they can check that out yeah that's so great chatting with you thank you so much for your time with you too, man. Um, your Instagram account is the best way for people to keep up a date with everything, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, okay. for sure. It's just your name, right? If they want to keep up a date. It's just my name. Very simple. Very straightforward. Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turner, youtube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Hadas and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turner Dip. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.